You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rudrance for our Black and White Sports 2. Let's talk about the Colts and Jeff Saturday's hiring. Because this morning on CBS NFL, Bill Cower, legendary coach of the Steelers, he lost his ever loving mind over this hiring of Jeff Saturday. Of course, Jeff Saturday was um, with ESPN as an analyst, also a consultant to the Colts, has been for a while. Frank Wright acknowledged earlier in the week that, I mean, he's had plenty of conversations with Jeff Saturday about this team and that Saturday was involved with some of the things that was going on and he was very very familiar with the inner workings of what was going on on this team now i'll be the first to say did this hiring seem batshit crazy sure he's a colts legend i get that um but you did have gus bradley and john fox both former head coaches and of course standard operating procedure generally speaking is to elevate whatever former head coach you have on a staff It tends to make the most logistical sense in the fact that, well, they just understand the inner workings of being a head coach and the day-to-day process that's involved in that. Now, I'm going to let you know right now, I'm watching the game. The Colts are up. It's 1914. They're beating the Raiders, and Josh McDaniels may not survive uh, after this if he loses this game to Jeff Saturday. So... Um, I could give a rip whether or not Jeff Saturday is the coach of the Colts. It should be noted, if he wins this game, he just happened, and and this is where you feel bad for Frank Wright, he just happened to get Jonathan Taylor back today. He's been hurt. And Matt Ryan is back to playing and looks pretty good, to be honest with you. Uh, So you got to wonder, I kind of am starting to believe that maybe it was Frank Wright that wanted uh, Matt Ryan benched. I don't know, and maybe that was a disagreement uh, between him and Ursay. But let's let's first let's start with Joe Thomas, and we're not going to get into Joe Thomas a lot, but I do want you to hear this clip because he said that Ursay hired his drinking buddy. I mean, Joe Thomas, legendary. Uh, Offensive lineman for the Browns, guy that will probably go in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he he went off a little bit himself. When you hire your drinking buddy to be the head coach of an NFL football team, it is one of the most disrespectful things I've ever seen in my entire life to the commitment, the lifestyle, and the experience that it takes to be an NFL coach, any coach, much less the head coach of the Indianapolis Football Colts, you have got to be kidding me that this is something that Jim Ursay and Jeff Saturday, who's not blameless for accepting the job, could have talked and decided that this was the best thing for the Indianapolis Colts at this juncture of the season. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing that does kind of bother me about uh, Saturday taking this job is that he previously turned down opportunities to be the offensive line coach. Um, That does kind of bother me. Uh, and, and I think that was that was somewhat uh, Bill Cowers, uh, one of the points he was making. So, Bill Cower, legendary coach of uh, the Steelers, he absolutely lost his shit on Saturday. You know, guys, I, I played in the National Football League for five years. I went on to become an assistant coach right from playing the coach, and I was assistant coach for seven years. Hmm. Blessed to be able to go to Pittsburgh and be a head coach at the age of 34 for 15 years. I'm speaking on behalf of the coaching profession. I know for a fact that Jeff Saturday was offered an opportunity to become a head, an assistant coach with the Indianapolis Colts multiple times in the last four years. Correct. He declined, citing that he had a TV job and wanted to spend more time with his family. Mm-hmm. I get it. That's fair. I get it. Coaching is about commitment and it's about sacrifice. It's not just a job. It's a lifestyle. That being said, Jeff Saturday has taken a position this year as a consultant for the Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. And he's talked to them weekly from his home in Atlanta. Now to find out on Monday, in that short period of time, he's now the head coach 
of the new Indianapolis Colts, overseeing a staff that he chose not to not to choose, not to join, because of a lifestyle. Jeff Sari talked about in his first press conference the fact that he's going to use his second half as an opportunity to build his resume, to see whether or not he can coach in the future. Mm. I say to that, what about the assistants on the staff right now? The guys that were there in training camp, the guys that were there early in the morning and late at night, the guys that have gone through the first six weeks in that building, guys like Gus Bradley, Scotty Montgomery, uh, John Fox, don't they deserve the opportunity for an owner to hire a coach who's never been an assistant at the college level or the pro level? and overseeing a very much a lot of candidates that are qualified for that job as we see in Steve Wilkes, an opportunity to build a resume. It's a disgrace to the coaching profession. Mm. And regardless of how this thing plays out, what happened in Indianapolis is a travesty. You know, wow. Wilson. Wow. So Bill Cower did not hold back. He called it a travesty. I will let you know. Uh, Carr just hit Devontae Adams for a long touchdown pass, and the Raiders just pulled ahead of the Colts in that game. Uh, I've got it up on my TV screen on Red Zone. Um, I'm giving you the score while I'm doing this. Uh, but the point being, now, look, one of my things with this is I understand where Cowher is coming from, and I don't like that he turned down previous opportunities to be an offensive line coach. I would have liked to have seen him take that job, and this then this becomes a lot more understandable. Now, Joe Thomas just flat brought up Jim Ursay's uh, lifestyle. I mean, he brought up his drinking habits, essentially. You hired your drinking buddy. Yikes. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's not holding back. Now, Cowher didn't hold back either, but the one thing you got to bring up in this is, look, John Fox has had two opportunities. Two opportunities to be a head coach. He's done the head coaching thing. I'm sure he'd like to be a head coach again. But we kind of know what we're getting with John Fox, don't we? And then uh, Gus Bradley. Yeah, that didn't exactly work out just wonderfully, did it, as a head coach. So, by the other side of the token, you could say, well... You know, we've kind of seen what those guys have got already. Now, Scott Scott Montgomery, Scotty Montgomery, uh, I can't speak to him. You know, I, I, I can't speak about him. But um, I understand where these coaches are coming from. But at the same time, is Jeff Saturday supposed to turn this job down? I'm just wondering. A guy you respect, the owner of the coats, guy you're friends with, calls you up and says, look, just coach out the rest of the season. And and that's the other thing. This Colts team's not very good. It's not. Uh, do you think putting another person in that position is setting them up for potential success? I mean, he's talking about building a resume. Well, what is there, eight games left? That resume's two and six? I, I mean, you get the point, right? Um I, I don't expect this Jeff Saturday thing to work out, but it might, and it's unusual, and it's not like Jeff Saturday hasn't been around the game a very, very long time. Not to mention, Peyton Manning was sort of a coach on the field, and and, and Jeff Saturday was sort of a coach on the field, okay? Uh, so I don't know, again, I got to be honest with you. I'm a big Frank Wright guy, and I think another team should hire him like immediately. I truly do. do. I think he did a phenomenal job considering Andrew Luck decided to retire, and he 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 went 11 and five with Philip Rivers. I mean, that was at the end of the game, right? Uh, so anyway. I probably wouldn't have gotten rid of Carson Wentz, but, you know, 27 touchdowns, seven picks. What do I know? Uh, I understand he screwed the pooch versus the Jags, and he's looked terrible this year. Uh, but, yeah, he some, won some games last year, too, though. Uh, tell me what you think, black and white sports, two fans. Cowers pissed. Joe Thomas is pissed. Everybody's pissed. But the Raiders are barely beating 
the, the, the Raiders literally took the lead in this game while I'm filming this at, at into the fourth quarter, by the way, the Colts were beating the Raiders. Now, I don't know what that says about the Raiders. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.